Welcome back. We're doing some more tessellations today, and we're going to do a different type. Today we are going to do what's called a glide reflection tessellation. So a glide reflection is kind of like footsteps. That's something you learned in symmetry, where two things are identical, and there's a pattern, but they're kind of flip-flopped. So with the glide reflection, what we're going to do is we're going to do our, our nibbling again. Remember the nibbling technique where we take a little nibble, but then we're going to flip it kind of upside down. You'll see what I mean. All right, let's get back to this. Back to our cardboard box. Hopefully you have a cereal box that you can cut up and use. I'm going to cut out another little square here. And hopefully this one turns out a little better than the last one. Um, the other one wasn't bad, but I was aiming to get it perfect. So you're going to cut that out. And you're going to take a nibble out of one side of it. So go ahead, get your square ready. And then you're going to use a pencil and you're going to draw a design. Kind of like last time, the simpler you make the design, the better. Because you have to cut it. Now, there's no perfect size for making a tessellation uh, shape. I'm using this size because it's the size of a post-it note and it's convenient because I can stick the post-it note right on there. Um, it could definitely be smaller. It could definitely be bigger as long as it's a, it's a square. And it doesn't, in the end, it doesn't have to be a square. It could be a rectangle. So if you wanted to use a note card, you could use a note card without making it a square. You could just make it rectangular. But the tradition is to make them square. And there's probably a good reason for that, so let's just stick with that. So this time, uh, you don't want it to be a, a symmetrical thing either. So you don't want to do like a V or a curve. It should be something a little uneven because we're going to be making it uh, kind of flip-flop. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to make a curve, but I'm going to make an uneven curve. No, I don't really like that. It's okay. It, nobody's going to see this part. It can look messy. I'm going to make a curve that looks a little different. Remember, it has to go from one corner to the other corner. It's very important that you get the corners. No, I don't really like that either. Picky, picky, right? Picky, picky. I'm going to do it in Sharpie, so I have to commit to it. I'm going to do this. Okay, zigzags might look better, but I was in the mood for something that's easier to cut. Since my last video is so long, I want to make this one shorter so you don't have to spend all day watching it. Okay, so here we go. This is what makes it a glide, a glide reflection. I'm going to take this. I'm going to flip it like that and slide it across. So I glided it. So I reflect it. I get the other side, and then I slide it across. So up here, the hole is on this side, and down here, the hole is on that side, the bump, right? And then I'm going to tape it. Again, I'm going to be careful with my tape. I have to line this up perfectly from end to end. And it's better to use a lot of small pieces of tape than try to get one long piece of tape because that long piece of tape might end up going over the tracing edge. So be very careful that your tape does not go over the tracing edge. And obviously you need enough tape so it's sturdy, so when you start tracing it. Okay, so then there we go. Now this time I'm going to try to do it just to see what it looks like. I'm going to do it right along the bottom. I'm going to keep it even, kind of like the stripes on the American flag, but much more funky. So again, you could do the tracing in pencil. Wow, this one's a lot easier to trace. Oh, and then when you get to the next one, you actually flip it. So every other time you flip, 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 flip. <laughs> Is that annoying? Sorry. Flip, flip, flip. There we go. So you could be doing this in pencil like me. If you're a little nervous about making a mistake. Or you could commit and you could do a marker. You could also use a pen or a colored pencil. Colored pencil would actually be a good idea. 
boy, an erasable colored pencil would be the best. I don't happen to own any of those, but they're very, very cool. Okay. So you can see I just keep flip-flapping. And then when we get to the next row, that's where it gets a little more tricky to get it right. Okay. So what I'm going to do for the next row is I'm going to take it like this, and I'm going to slide it right up above, but then I'm going to flip it. So each row should have the same shape pointing the opposite direction. So we not only flip when we go side to side, but we flip when we go top to bottom. So we line this up the best we can. So no matter which way you look, it's going to be the opposite. Kind of like a chess or checkers board. Whichever way you go from a black square, you're going to hit a white square. And we flip it and slide it. Flip, slide, flip, slide, flip, slide. Right. And then if I were to go up the next row, I would take it and I would flip it again to do right above it. I'm just going to jump ahead to there so you can see how that looks. This is pretty cool. It's a very basic design, but the fact that it is flipping and gliding and reflecting makes it more interesting than a simple translation or glide tessellation. And with this one, you remember with the last one I showed you a way to make it even more funky? That same trick works here. Okay, so you can see that looks pretty cool. And you might not notice because my design isn't that crazy, but it's bump over here, bump over there. And so it makes a, a cool thing. Of course, sometimes we want to make it even cooler. So let's, let's go crazy. Now I'm going to add some jagged things here. And remember, you have to go from one corner to the other. Look at that, committing in Sharpie. And remember, it has to start at one corner, it has to end at the other corner. You could do it without going all the way to the corners, but it makes it really hard to line it up, almost impossible to line it up properly. Unless you're one of those people who's spent hundreds or thousands of hours doing this, and you have some techniques so I'm going to cut this nibble out, this side, the other side. And you don't have to do this advanced technique. It's just kind of fun. You know, once you get used to something, carefully down to the corner. Once you get used to something, it's fun to mix it up. Now, the interesting thing here is this one has to flip and slide, too. Is this going to work? Maybe. Did I test this out to make sure I know what I'm talking about? I did not. So I guess we're all going to learn together whether the, the double flip and glide technique actually tessellates. Ooh, that's good. Got the whole piece of tape in one. Okay. Fingers crossed. Let's do this one in, let's see. Let's do this one in blue. Let's get crazy. So as you can see, this thing looks crazy. My two nibbles look the opposite color of my main piece because I flipped them. So I'm just going to lay this at any crazy angle here. And see, careful, 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 Mr. Cattell. Don't rush, man. I'm not using pencil. Don't rush. Ooh, I like those jagged ones. Ooh, that was nice. Let's see. Let's do fingers crossed that this actually tessellates. I think it'll work. I didn't do the math. I'm doing the drawing before doing the math. So then I flip it like this. Huh? Oh, right. I had to flip it two ways. So I'm doing... Okay, wow. Where was that even? So, so I have to flip it over, and I have to, oh, I see. So if I flip it over, then I just slide it. I get it. I only have to flip it one way. I don't flip it two ways. But that does flip it two ways because I flipped it over. So that actually reverses both sides, so it will work. And I think it's going to look 
pretty amazing too. Got to oh no, oh, I slipped. Line it up again very carefully. So again, speed is not the goal here. Not goofing up is the goal. Holding tightly and not getting crazy lines, especially if you're not using a pencil. Oh wow. So the other thing you can do is you can just be going around and seeing where it fits, basically. So if you don't know where to put it, just move it around until it fits someplace. That is actually the easy part because it is like a moving puzzle piece. Oh, darn. So hopefully you're using something stiff, stiffer than just a post-it note, maybe a note card, but hopefully even stiffer than a note card, hopefully something like a cereal box. Look how cool. And then I flip it again and I see where it fits. Oh, this is going to be my favorite one yet. Looks a little like a demented bird, but that's okay. I like birds of all sorts, especially the ones that I drew. MC Asher, watch, watch out. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So this, this is my favorite one yet. So that is a double-sided glide reflection tessellation using the nibbling technique on two sides. So remember the first one we did, ooh, the tape doesn't want to come off. Uh, the first one we did was just cutting this thing out this little curve, and then flipping it and taping it to the other side. And then the second thing I did was I went to another side, corner to corner. I cut this one out, I flipped it, and I slid it over to the other side. So the important thing when you're doing this is to make sure that, oops, that tape is not meant to be reused. Um, make sure that your nibbles look different, are a different color than your main part. And that's how you know you did it right. My favorite one yet. Okay. So have fun tessellating.